The following interview was, condu was conducted with Mary Ford, the class of 1959 for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, October 20th, 2008 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years and siblings. Well, I was born 71 years ago tomorrow at Clinton Hospital, uh, Clinton, Indiana, down on the Wabash River, Vermillion County. Um, my mom had been Ethel Wallace and my dad, Colin Coons Harrison, and I was the first and only for 10 years, so I suspect I was kind of a brat. <laughs> Were your parents native to Indiana? They grew up in that area. Okay. Um, my mom was uh, second oldest of seven children. Her mother died giving birth to the seventh when she was 10 years old. Mm. So she grew up as kind of a second mom. The kids were raised by aunts and um, she was absolutely one of the most positive, uh, loving people I have ever known in my life. I was blessed with a remarkable mother. Um, she went to work for a family in Chicago, this from tiny Shepherdsville, Indiana, to take care of the house and uh, their children when she was very young. And one of the most touching scenes I remember was between my mother and her baby brother, as she called him, um, when they were both well into their 70s and 80s. He was remembering that she saved her money in Chicago, and when she came home for Christmas, she brought a sheepskin coat to each one of her brothers. And he remembered that throughout his life. That's a nice gift. Yes. Um, I absolutely, I was thwarted by this um, question because I have no memory of being little and where I lived, where I slept. Um, we what lived was school, do you remember what grade school was like? Was it well, I, we lived was with my small? grandparents oh. for three years and I have a picture of me standing near a, a little Christmas tree on a table and on the back and, and a picture to go with it was a very small travel trailer. On the back in my mother's handwriting was, this was the first home of our own. It was a used travel trailer that my dad bought. And we didn't have to live with grandma and grandpa anymore. But wow. it must it have not been awful because I don't remember it. Sure, <laughs> right. What was, then you went on, it was high school? Went to uh, Hillsdale. Okay, um, what was high was school one like? of those uh, Indiana, big brick cubes, uh, one through 12, um, no kindergarten. Um, I remember was, that... Was it close to home? Did you walk, could you walk there? No, I went on the school bus. Okay. And I remember that being great fun, because we got to see friends as we picked them up. <laughs> and uh, went back the country roads. Uh, I remember the, the classes being blended first and second probably. I remember fourth and fifth especially because Mrs. Watts was our teacher and her son Jim was in the class and he called her mom once instead of Mrs. Watts and she smacked him. <laughs> okay. I liked school always. After my freshman year. In high school? In, uh, in, in high school. Yeah. We moved to Indianapolis. My dad had been working back in Vermillion County in a two-man machine shop, which he loved, but there were no benefits whatsoever, and he finally realized that wasn't going to work. So for two years, he, he, he went to Indianapolis and got a job with um, Allison Division of General Motors in machine repair and waited two years to move us um, because he wanted to see if it would work. And um, I have one sister 10 years younger than I, and we did move. Um, 
And that was a blessing because of General Motors' excellent benefits and health insurance. And Whereabouts did you live in Indianapolis? Then you forgot a house. We lived on uh, the west side of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, my father made frugality. Um, watchword. So we bought a house that had no indoor plumbing at all. I did not live in a place with a flush toilet until I moved into Sheely Hall. Isn't that amazing? It's interesting. It's good that's one of the things that comes out of these things is sharing the, the growing up the reminiscences and, and the impact it makes on your life. Okay. I didn't even I don't remember thinking that was odd. Um, although one of these 50-year remembrances that's going to come up this weekend, um, we still did not have an indoor toilet when I graduated from Purdue. And we were married the evening I graduated. And that was 500-mile race on the west side of Indianapolis. Can't complicate things. Um, but one of Fred's pledge brothers didn't have a place to stay, so he stayed with us. And it was time to go to bed, and he said, where's the bathroom? And I said, well, you can wash up in there, Jim, but I went to the back door and opened it, and I said, down the path. So he's going to stay with us these, yay, 50 years later. And when Fred was leaving him a phone message, I said, tell Jimmy that we have indoor plumbing now. <laughs> <laughs> we moved to the big time. <laughs> what, uh, all, all those little things just yeah. keep wandering around in my head. What uh, was high school? What high school did you go to there? Um, Hillsdale, and then Ben Davis, okay. which was before big big bands. Um, and I moved from a class of seventeen to a class of two hundred and fifty plus. Wow. And oh. tell us a little bit about high school. Were there any student activities and? Things that you participate in? Your yes, call? I was in 4-H, both in Vermilion and Marion County. That probably had a, uh, the biggest influence and the biggest anchor in my life uh, because I had been to Purdue for 4-H Roundup. Um, it was part of my thinking. And my grandmother, with whom we had lived, um, was probably the most positive influence in my life. She said... You can do anything you put your mind to, and you need to go to college. So I always knew I would. Would your parent? Did your parents have anything to say about it? I mean, did they encourage you to? Um, Not as they much. They didn't as say, "Don't." My mom would have uh, done anything, sure, to send me. Right. Um, I always worked every summer and saved that money and. Um, Got scholarships. And had you, uh, how did you happen to pick Purdue? Uh, what did you think I of IU? Oh. I didn't even think of anything else because of the connection with 4-H. I knew about Purdue. Okay, okay. I'd always thought Ben Davis was too big and I would be miserable. And self-inflicted misery is the worst kind. Right, <laughs> exactly. I, I never thought Purdue was too big. I loved it from the time I set my foot on the campus and self-inflicted joy is also. <laughs> there you go. Whereabouts did you live on? And tell us about your college days and where did you live on campus? I lived in Sheely for two years. Okay. Um, I roomed with um, a girl from grade school because my dad told me not to. And it ruined a good friendship. <laughs> um, and then my sophomore year, I was a student staff member. Uh, in the hall? Uh, yes, a sophomore counselor on a freshman mm -hmm. hall. And um, my roommate then happened to be pinned to um, a DU. And we needed a car uh, before school actually started our sophomore year to take a wedding gift to Delphi to a freshman friend. And that roommate happened to have a car, and his name happened to be Fred Ford. <laughs> Another one of those lovely little, gosh, that was nice. 
<laughs> we needed the car the second night to do something else. And then he asked me out. So that Very was good. my sophomore year. And that's where you met, right? Yes. Yeah. And Fred Blind date. Yeah. And Fred was a year ahead. Okay. So. Now tell us, um, what was your major? And uh, I was in home ec because okay. of 4-H. I don't okay. remember even thinking of anything else. Okay. I always took home ec um, classes and liked them. Um, my mom was a wonderful seamstress, so I always made my own clothes and it was just a natural 4-H. Yeah, sure. Um, I was in education, home ec vocational education, and did student teaching in Muncie. Um, I would not have been a good teacher then, I realize now. I didn't love it. I liked it when I was doing my student teaching. I did that well. But it didn't come naturally. I'm not a natural teacher. Um, so I think fate d dealt a kind twist there. Sure, um, which it often does. Right. And uh, I would have been much better later as a teacher. But um, we decided that we probably would never be this close to a university again. So you and Fred? Well, yes, uh -huh. when we were married, okay. early married. That summer, he finished um, his uh, degree, and I should probably just go to grad school since we wouldn't be this close again. I would go ahead and get my master's degree because heavens, the closest teaching job was in Frankfurt, and that we just thought that was too far to drive. <laughs> and here we are, 50, 50 years later, right? thinking, Frankfurt, you can go there for lunch. <laughs> right. How about athletics? You go to the games, and did you, you didn't participate in athletics. Well, they didn't have any athletics. The women no, at that time I'm, I'm not an athlete. Yeah. Um, but you were participating. I played, I remember junior high, girls basketball, where you couldn't cross the center line. Yeah. Gym was more, it was more the gym kind yes, of thing, activities. Yeah. Right. And yeah. um, he played basketball. Um, I was in freshman card section, been in that stadium for 50 years. Right. That's, for research, that's Block P. Block yeah. P. Right, yeah, and they had the cards. Yeah. It was really <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Now, after graduation, then what, tell us what uh, transpired. Is after that when Purdue? You got, uh huh. Then when you got, is that when you got married? We got married that evening. Okay. The evening of, your of my graduation. Because. Um, was that in the spring? No, it's May 31st. Oh, okay. So they d at that time, did they just have just the spring commencement, or did they also have? They a did not have a December. Okay, um, and of course they didn't. Would have had that was no the end August. of my four years. No August. Okay. Um, and um, he had to be back at school the next week, and we were ready to get married. So we did. Um, Went to French Lick for two and a half days, came back for the rehearsal dinner of our best man. He was married on a Thursday for sentimental reasons, the date of something. And um, then we moved into 118.6 Marshall Drive out there in married student housing. Um, and lived there, I guess, just the summer. Because when he went on staff, was he in school? Up. He was. Uh, the reason he, he was had to come back. He oh, was finishing his, his, his master's, master's then. In okay. Okay. And uh, so my senior year, we dated, but um, um, he had those MPR reports, managerial policy reports, and I would proofread on Friday night, type it Saturday morning, and then Saturday night we might have a date. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. It's interesting, isn't it? Not yet. Well, you it look is, back, it right. is. Looking back. Uh, then after, so then when you moved, when, so then this is when you people stayed permanently at Purdue. You're yes. all the time, right? Um, now, did you go on, you went on for a master's then? I did. Okay. Um, in textile science. Okay. With um, Rose Padgett doing. That doesn't ring a bell. Uh, she was an English lady. She had a textile lab set up with, I did my master's thesis on the effects of chlorine bleach 
on nylon and cotton fabric. Wow. Can you believe Purdue gave a master's degree for that? <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> yards and yards of nylon fabric because at that time, uh, women's underwear were being made from nylon and it was new and it discolored under your arms and could you get that that stain out? I mean, that was a practical kind of sure, thing. Sure, right. Somebody else did her master's thesis on cotton diapers because she was pregnant having a baby and I don't know what that focus was, but they, we, when we were growing up, we had those yeah. cotton ones, you know, yes. and fortunately my parents were able to send it out for, <laughs> <laughs> they had baby care service or right. something like that. <laughs> diaper service. Right, yeah, diaper service, right. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about your experience, your interaction with faculty and the faculty wise, and your husband continued on and... Uh, he um, got his PhD while he was working. So he was technically a staff member in the business office. Okay, and he just he, that was must have been hard, going working full time and doing the. PhD. He could take six hours a, a semester, oh. and um, we had our first child okay. within the two years, and um, we just didn't know any different. That's the way just we went with it, right? Where did then? You, where were you living then? You moved we from lived Mary's to at, housing. Um, well, when he went on staff, right. the rent went up and we couldn't afford it. So we, um, where did we live? On Fowler Street. Okay. Like, in a little, um, oh, um, one living room, one kitchen, one small bathroom kind of thing. And we had a hide bed so that you got ready to go to bed, you rolled it out and you got it, and you got rolled it back in. <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> <laughs> um, and unfortunately, or fortunately, we had a Christmas tree that we put our feet in and a little fireplace. And they were building, doing some kind of road construction right in uh, front of it, and there were surveying stakes. I'm afraid we started a few fires with those. <laughs> <laughs> well, there But then they. we, um, uh, when we were going to have a baby, we moved over to 910 State Street, which they just tore down. It was right next to Hillel Foundation, the White House between Hillel yes, and yes, the Corner yes, House. Yes, right. Huh. Lived there for two or three years. Yeah. Very and would take our baby Lynn over to the vet science to see the animals, and that's when we still had a Purdue Creamery. And I rem that was still in operation when yes. I came here. When I heard yes. you can go over there for ice cream for a nickel. It was really good. I don't remember how much, but yeah. we went often. <laughs> Gooseberry sherbet was oh, very good. Yeah, then you get the uh, milk and things there, and the cheese was really good. I don't remember getting anything except ice cream, but I'm sure they, it was they At one time, available. I think they had, yeah, yeah. that's true, yeah. right. Well, then, go on. so tell us a little about interaction and working with them. Well, when he finally finished, finished his Ph.D., right. um, he said he was going to take a year off not off of work, but off of doing 24 hours of work. And we moved over to um, South 9th Street, and our second child was born over there. Um, we literally, there on State Street, um, we had two grandmothers an hour away, one in each direction, waiting to take care of this little blonde girl. And I thought we would just go on these interview trips all over the country and it would be kind of a second honeymoon and have a good time. And within two weeks of finishing his PhD, Purdue made an offer and he accepted. What, was, what position was that one? Um, business office, I don't know. Okay. Well, um, something in the business office. Yeah. Room, right. Okay. R.B. Stewart started the business office training program. He was the first, really, in the whole country to realize that the faculty was also managing the business operations, and they were not qualified. So Fred was the first trainee in the business office, and um, I guess that was when he was still in grad school, because when it came time to choose a thesis topic, he realized he was in the middle of a fertile research field. Sure. Nobody had ever written about it before. So he wrote his thesis on the business management of the university. Very good. And Most that, appropriate. Right? Yeah, prepped him for whatever, assistant business manager or something. Right. That's the position they offered. Okay. Probably, I think the princely sum of 
$4,200 a year or $4,500. Putting it in context with those days, though. Yes. 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 Others have quoted things, too, but then I always say, well, put it in the context because of a research thing on board, you know. Right, right. And um, that's appropriate. Yeah. But um, yeah, I remember we went to Chicago. We parked our daughter with the grandma and went to Chicago. He had to wear suits down to the office, and I could find shoes that fit. We overdrew our bank account. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, stuff you don't want to know. No, but that's very interesting, though. But you uh, t talk so, about, yeah. um, and then it, he progressed up, and your roles maybe changed a little bit. I really was the traditional stay-at-home mom. Um, How many children did you, do you have? Uh, three. Okay. But um, two were three years apart, and we thought we were finished. But um, I got involved in Food and Women's Club because Ruth Free Hafer yeah, I was gonna ask you about called that and um, said, we, uh, Food and Women's Club is having, I forget the event, um, I'd like to pick you up. Well, you have to say, of course, thank you so much. <laughs> and that, in those days, um, new What year would this be, in the 60s maybe, the 70s? Oh, um, Lynn was born in 61, so, okay. yeah, okay. 60s. And um, you were a mentor. You had a sponsor. Somebody called and said, Oh, you for know, the club. For the club, right. yeah. And a lot of things on campus. You were helped. And um, you knew you were expected to go. And um, so I was introduced to Purdue Women's Club I did not get in any of the interest groups for some reason. I worked with the newcomers later and um, then held office and served as president. Um, did the club, um, was it faculty-wise primarily? Yes, and faculty and, and administrators. Okay. Yes. Were, there, were there staff people that uh, would have been members at that time or not so much? Probably, but I don't remember. Right. I even knew the difference at that point. Right, okay. And the club has it's grown over time. Though, has it's it? grown and leveled out and diminished. And um, I, then sometime when I was in office, we um, had to decide whether townspeople could become members and decided, why not? You know, if they, Before that to, was if they pay the dues. But we had to change the Constitution and bylaws to do that. Because, because initially it was only limited to Purdue. Right, right. Mm -hmm. What about well, people at the regional campus wouldn't have uh, joined that, though, would they? They could they have. They could. But, but, uh, but as an outgrowth, at least uh, the Calumet campus has its own women's club. And, um, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That follows and it makes it collegiality within right. that group. Right, right. Okay. Um, so you, in, you also interacted with the president, President Hubdy. He, oh, Hubdy was president when you yes, came. Yes, and one of those um, calls from Ruth Freehafer was, um, I just want to warn you that something is coming up. Mrs. Hubdy will call and ask you to serve at the faculty open house. And I said, well, that's nice. She said, there have been people th who responded, right. Right. You're not Mrs. Hubdy. And I said, well, I appreciate the warning. I probably wouldn't have said that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that's and it was that smart kind move. of nurturing. Right. Well, Freehaver, uh, he was the. Uh, he was the business manager. Uh, um, okay. Lyle Freehaver, right? Yes. Okay. And for whom Freehaver Hall is named. Right. He okay. came from state government. Uh, so he brought. State in Indiana mm -hmm. State? Okay. Mm -hmm. He brought a, a different perspective to university management was very good. Okay. Uh, Francis Finn. Um, that name I recognize. Probably he was here for a while, but he left then. Yes. Yeah. He went to Nakubo, the National Association, um, and that bumped Fred up a notch. So he served more, more quickly and longer than he, mm -hmm. than the plan said. <laughs> Understand. Right. Okay. Um, but there have been people like the Freehavers you know, the Finns, all, all through the, our path of life that have yeah. just been there to help along. Right? And, and the other supportive crew, for me, have been the Dean of Women, uh, Dean 
with students. Hillary, so Hillary there was Sleeman, all that whole Betty, lineage. Right, yes. Betty Nelson. Back to what you're talking about, a faculty. What, what sort of event was would that event that they asked you to serve at? Um, was this the president oh. had um, a reception for new faculty? Okay. Met male and female mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. here and on campus. Came. Yeah, it was at their home. Oh, okay, on Seventh Street. And Street. yes, and um, um, who followed him? Hansons and Bearings followed that, con uh, continued that tradition. I don't know if um, Dr. Cordova has done that. I suspect she has. Yeah, probably. They still have, they used to, they have something for the newcomers too that uh, I think for new faculty, for, uh, that for new faculty and I, sometimes some of our new people have been taken by maybe the dean or something. At the to home. the Probably Westwood. Home? Okay. Right. So I think uh, they, Purdue Women's Club uh, continues to have a newcomers right. group. Right. Uh, to familiarize um, the people, not just with Purdue, but with things around the town. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, how about some university events? You, uh, you attended a lot of those. Athletic. I did, and, and um, Share with you know how I grew up. So having an opportunity of seeing the Metropolitan Opera, Road Company, as a student, it was just like, I had, was Dorothy and I had been to Oz. Um, we still dressed up. So as a student, I lived at the Alpha Chi House by then, and I remember thinking, this can't be me. I, our whole Purdue experience has been kind of that for Yes, me. Uh, you were in a sorority. Uh, then you did join a sorority. I did. Okay. What sorority were you in? Alpha Chi Omega. Okay. Do you still keep in touch? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Purdue, I mean, coming to Purdue and then pledging Alpha Chi Omega probably have been the, the tapestry um, outside my family because um, I didn't, I wasn't employed, but um, you know how organizations just <laughs> slurp up young people? Well, I was advisor to the chapter from which I had come, and I loved it, and I was good at it. So, and there was always the older alums who said, well, of course you can do that. We'll help you if you need it. So, that's I nice. had good tending. Yeah, that's yeah. nice, yeah. But, but um, let's see, Hanson and Hicks and Dr. Baring, you know, were, and then. Fred worked for all of them, right. worked with all of them. Right, and, and then just and Jeske also He as well. retired before, before that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, he retired at 62. Okay. Um, and he said, I've broken in enough presents. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go back to some of the events I want to share with us. Are some ones like commencement or I distinguished went to alumni? As many commencements as I could because I love them. They do. The pageantry you. is. Um, we even went to one for a daughter. Uh, our two older kids went elsewhere, but Kathy graduated from Purdue. Okay, I was gonna ask, ask a little about your family. What, uh, what are they doing now? So where did our, two of them? Our older daughter went to Penn State, got her PhD at the University of Maryland, and I think maybe she was fifth or sixth grade. I remember clearly we were sitting in a beanbag chair on our, kind of our back porch looking into the, the ravine was either spring or fall because it's so beautiful then. And she sat up straight and she said, Mom, someday I'm going to have a PhD. And she does. <laughs> In what area? What does she do then? Political she teaches. science. Is she, does she, she, is she she's teaching? A, she's just finished a six-year term as chairman of the Department of Political Science at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. Okay. So she's technically on sabbatical, but she's not home much. Okay. Is she married? Does she have children? She's married, um, second husband, and she has a daughter, nine, and a son, six. Okay. Got a late start, but. Sounds good. You got a grandchildren. Yes, we do. Right. 14 years And hours your away. other children. And our son is an artist, a jewelry artist. He's in Philadelphia. Our younger daughter is the Purdue grad, and they're living in Great Falls, Virginia, and she has a six and a half year old boy, a four plus year old boy, and a two year old that daughter that looks just like she did. Oh, that's interesting. And, the, and, she's and they a come stay at home. Yeah. And they uh, they get together because you, you had a place in called 
We have a place in Culver that is the magnet. Right. Uh, yeah. your, your husband told me about yeah. that. Okay. Um, were you a faculty fellow? Was Fred a no, faculty fellow? Neither of us. Okay. No. But did you ever go to some of the, probably went to some events in the residence oh, halls? Yes, yeah. because that was part of his responsibility. Sure, right. And uh, it was a ni it's a nice program then. Um, President's Council. Uh, I asked him last night if we became members in the initial. That was offering. Dr. Hansen is the one that started it. was. He right. started that, uh, the campaign for the 80s or whatever right, the yeah. theme was. He said no. Um, the first members of President's Council were um, like the lead donors, um, if you were, had a campaign, and then they opened it up to um, the university. And he said he and Phil Haas were one of two of the very early faculty and administrators that joined that President's joined it, Council. And really, it's grown over time. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk a little about the campus in the 60s and 70s. Share with us for the researchers what it was well, like. Well, then I ha was a mom of two little kids right? and uh, was consumed by that. But I remember um, him being very fearful. You know, the unrest was so unusual for Purdue. And um, hearing Betty Nelson talk about it, you know, she had a completely different slant on it. Um, you know, these were kids that were that had a cause. They weren't dangerous. But I remember Lyle Freehaver wanted to send um, Ruth and their kids out of town. Um, mm. Keep the doors locked. Don't take unusual, don't answer the phone. Um, so there was a lot of um, fear. I can't describe it any other way. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't think we paid any attention to it. It was to see, walk through the Union or to um, see the pictures was just so unusual. It just wasn't. I can't believe it was going on. Yeah, it wasn't a part of the Purdue that I knew. Right. And, um, and we were really down on campus that much then. Mm -hmm. Which is, was okay. Yeah, yeah it was which okay. Is good, right? yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, that was when Fred was just getting on the kind of the official track, and um, I just declared that. And, and at that point, we could have been out Friday, Saturday, and every night of the week. And I said, there will be one night when we have prior obligation, and that's home. And if you must go, I'm staying home with the kids. So that's hard. It really is because there are um, a lot of events to face. Campus. I was still working with the, the Alpha Chi's, so you know I was aware that a lot of things were changing. Sure. Um, what sort of things were you? What does what the sorority were you involved in? Advi chapter advisor. So okay. you're involved in the day to day life. Okay. Um, and then as the kids got older, I went to the next level, which was a regional area. Um, but I watched the young women change and I was rearing a daughter and then another daughter and um, I could not have been more square boxed if you'd planned it. <laughs> so I grew up with the campus I guess. Yeah that's really nice. That's a nice thing to How about uh, any awards and honors that you've gotten that you'd like to share with us? And I, I really didn't. Stone I don't Hall. have any professional. Oh, right. Um, Stone Hall, isn't there a room or a yeah, ladder? Yeah, Yeah, tell us about that. Well, at Fred's retirement event, um, that was a surprise to me. Dennis Saviano presented. Tell us a little bit about what it is. Um, I have a wood plaque that is a replica of what's on the, the conference room. And. Um, then I was called on to make remarks, and I said, Dennis Saviano, that is the most interesting development pool I've ever seen, but thank you. Um, and I still believe that. <laughs> um, I didn't, I, I, I'm honored, but I truly don't think I did anything above and beyond what a lot of other people were doing, and if I hadn't been married to Fred Ford, a lot of these good things wouldn't have happened, but I wouldn't have a room named for me. That's very nice, though. What about participating in some of the awards that Fred has gotten? That's been, share that with, that's been kind of nice. He is one of the most humble people. 
so he might have gotten awards we didn't know about that same night at the, his retirement community uh, event um, our son and his partner were there and uh, all our, our kids and our adopted kids and um, at the end of the dinner Steve our son said dad I didn't know you did all that he said what he said I didn't know you did all that um, that's nice yeah it is nice. that is nice that's a nice comment and hearing it is also nice yeah, yeah. Um, it, mean, it, it goes right through you yeah and never leaves you right yeah so there's no harder worker. John Hicks once um, said, Fred Ford's not the brightest guy in the room, but he's the hardest worker, and he's a good thinker, and he's a long-range planner. And Purdue has been benefited from that. Yes, I would say so. That's right, exactly. Um, so it's been a fabulous life. Right. And it, riding on his coattails, it's just been fun. <laughs> It's a sharing thing, and it's nice it to is. go together. It, it really is nice. Um, and I truly believe that opposites attract. He would be happy in the middle of a 40-acre woods. Uh, where we live now is ideal because he can look out and see the ravine, and I can go out in the front and see people. <laughs> <laughs> that works so well. How about the post-Purdue years? What have you people been involved in? Um, continue to be involved in Purdue. All right. Uh, we have more time to go visit our families, and they're scattered, so right. it takes a trek, and they're very consumed by their own life, so we tell them, we'll come to you as long as we can. Good. And then they get together uh, in the summer. In they the come summer, they come to the You lake. go up to uh, their stay there the whole summer up in No, the, uh, we're back and forth. It's an hour and a half, and that's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> what about when the uh, winter? Do people go away? We go to Florida. We okay. go to uh, Everglades City, which is a dropping off place on the West Coast. It's a little old Florida town. His dad and mother bought a, a, a trailer as a fish camp, and we gratefully have a new trailer there. But um, he can get in his fishing boat and go out around 10,000 islands and then into the Gulf, but he's not equipped for deep water That's fishing a good move, right? and he'd be very lonely in that boat by himself <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, we've also been able to travel well any Having special ones that you'd like to share with you have you taken any of the uh, yes, president council have. ones we have um, and my favorite was Kenya that was our first one Wow, we saw the animals um, his last um, kind of take turns choosing he wanted to see the pyramids we went to Egypt that was fabulous and then last year we went to the Galapagos Islands. And Catherine, you know, for two kids from small town Indiana and smaller town Indiana, this is what Purdue has given us. Which is great. Yeah, it's, it's just right. amazing. Right. And we've been able to enjoy it and appreciate it yes. at the same time. Yes. Right. How about a favorite Purdue tradition? <laughs> I was wrestling with that last evening, yeah. and he kind of turned around and smiled, and he said, the wall. Do you even know what the wall is? If you drive out um, Stadium Avenue going west, there's um, kind of the retaining wall and, and um, the band shell is up there. Slater Hill. Yes, yes, on the right okay, hand the side. The wall kind of curves in. Well, before the days when you just went home to bed with your date, that was the parking place. We got engaged there. So um, I'd kind of forgotten about that. But yes, that was, <laughs> that was a Purdue tradition for They're us. They're right, a good one. And I still get weepy when the Purdue band marches and, and we all sing Hail Purdue and the Star Spangled Banner. And um, I think our formal commencement is the capstone and I, I grieve for the kids that don't go through and get, don't bring their parents to say thank you for sending me here this celebration is for you good point the herald trumpets still just make me tingle right you when and I can enjoy all these events together <laughs> <laughs> case Fred can't go we'll go when the, when the platform party comes around and, and comes up the steps and I go for all, all that of stuff that, that gooey stuff. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Right. How about a, how about outstanding event? 
Um, well, that was a tough one for me mm -hmm. because... You've got quite a few, maybe. I think um, coming to Purdue, it was the first in my family. Um, my mom dropped out in about sixth grade and my dad didn't finish high school. Um, and the experiences I had at Purdue, I remember I was um, presiding at the home ec banquet, the student banquet, and had the privilege of introducing this tiny, gracious little woman, Mary Emma Butts, talking about her life in Washington, D.C. And got to sit there and talk with her. And then, of course, knew, knew them as adults. Um, little things like that. Pledging Alpha Chi Omega. And I almost didn't get to do that. My freshman year, I had very good grades. And then my sophomore year, I actually started taking college courses, not review of high school. And I darn near flunked out. I lost two scholarships. And for the first time, I was told I couldn't do something I wanted to do. But as I, I, because I didn't have grades to qualify to go through Rush. But I petitioned and said, I blew it. Look at my freshman record. And I got to go through Rush and pledged, which gave me, and in those days, do you know Martha Bolt Graham? Of course you do in the library. I recognize the name, yeah, right. She, you would love her. You ought to interview her. <laughs> um, she lives she, in Westminster? She is. She's 94, mm -hmm. maybe. Annie Main. It was that kind of woman that began to influence me, besides the gracious house directors that we had, um, that taught me the skills that I needed to live this life at Purdue, which fork to use, I mean, basic things that I didn't know. So those are life-changing, but small things. But they mean a lot. They, they do a they lot They have for put you. me together well. Um, yeah. Taught me how to write thank you notes, little things like that, when to do it, how to, how to speak, how to introduce, being very I gracious. had had dinner with um, Jimmy Carter in Westwood. Tell us about that. How did that come about? Well, was I didn't get to sit with him, but oh. he was speaking on campus, okay. and Fred when must this have been when, he was, when he was president. He I think he was oh. ex-president, perhaps. Oh, okay. I think you're maybe right. Yeah. But still, I know. Good grief. Oh. Uh, we have a picture someplace in those boxes. Um, and for two registered Republicans, we got to eat with him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, Life-changing events, I, I think it's just a series. Right. And they're still happening. Right. Like, I cannot believe that I'm being interviewed for Purdue Archives. Well, we appreciate that. And this is my, uh, in closing, any summary, in closing remarks that you'd like to share with us? I think I've been rambling enough. <laughs> oh. Any questions that uh, were not asked that you can think of, or do you, anything that, closing that comes to mind? As you look back, you covered quite a few things, but just in. Uh, I can't imagine how you're going to organize it all, but. It'll, it'll be fine. Um, I think Purdue has had the ability to take students like me and give them opportunities to grow and that's the gift right. of an education. Right, and that's very nice. Yeah. And, and I think. Who, who would know that this small town pair would have their names on plaques to be dedicated Saturday, let alone on a building? That was another one. Um, for the researchers, make a couple comments about what the upcoming gift. I want to let you know that she's going to talk about those in closing, just about the gift that's the, for the arches. The arch, oh, yeah, um, for well, the that took place at um, our dining room table. I told you how yeah, it right. got started. Yeah. And then Ben Miller from my class and Fred 
from the 50, 58 um, set about organizing committees to raise a half million dollars. And they did it. And they have some money left over uh, to put into endowed scholarships. So, yeah. what tell, for the researchers, tell them it's going to be in an arch. Yeah. It's uh, two limestone pillars, one with uh, 1958 carved on it, and one with 1959, with an arch um, of um, wrought iron saying Purdue University. And it's the northern entrance, entr entrance into the center of campus. You can look from uh, ross Stadium straight through the arch down into the fountain in front of Huffy Hall. Yeah. And it's adjacent to Armstrong. Armstrong. And uh, in one of the remarks on Saturday, Saturday or maybe Friday night dinner, uh, the story will be told how Neil Armstrong's statue was meant to be looking at um, the stadium, but as soon as the arch went up, he turned his head, and now he's looking at that. <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. This concludes the interview, and I thank you very much. Thank you, it's been Catherine. Very, it's been a very privilege. nice. <clears throat>